Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So today I am opening up a discussion about the current format or just the format going into Maze of Millennia, which comes out on Friday as of recording this video and going into Phantom Nightmare, which is going to be releasing a lot of just really good cards. Um, this isn't like a tier list. I'm not talking about like how good certain decks are going to be. I might a little bit, but not like in depth like a tier list would be. Um, but more of just like the controversies going into this next format. Um, so again, I'm opening up the discussion. I don't want to see any toxicity in the comments down below. And if there are, I will just frankly delete it. Um, this is just a place where I think we can all people of mutual interest in Yu-Gi-Oh can just discuss our opinions safely. And if, you know, we have differing opinions, we can respect that. So, um, Let's just start real quick with pricing. I del I dove into this a little bit um, in a video a couple weeks ago um, where Yu-Gi-Oh prices are getting really high, and a lot of people in the comments were constantly just like, uh, "They're not getting they're not getting high. Yu-Gi-Oh prices have always been high. This has always been a thing in Yu-Gi-Oh. Just look at Teledad format." Well, we're getting there. Um, <laughs> so if we look at and again, I'm just gonna kind of bring a little of this back up. If we look at stuff like Wanted, Simple Spoils, whatever it's called. That card's like one hundred twenty-five to one hundred thirty dollars now, and you need three of them. That's a that's like three hundred sixty to three hundred ninety dollars for a playset of Wanted, but you can't want you can't run Wanted by itself. You need Diabell Star, which is another one to two copies depending on how many you want to run. Um, so that's another forty to eighty dollars right there. Plus the fact that we have Bonfire that comes out in Maze of Millennia, which pre-sailed at one hundred twenty dollars. And it's still pretty sailing at $100 after the collector's rare was revealed. Now, when it fully comes out, it's probably going to be like $70 to $80. So, again, that's like $240 for a playset of Bonfire if you're waiting till the full release of the card. Um, and then on top of that, we still don't know the rarity of the Promethean Princess or of Populous, which safe to assume they're going to be one of the two if not both are going to be secret rare in phantom nightmare and we have more sinful spoil stuff coming out in phantom nightmare and even in legacy of destruction um and just overall fire king or just sinful spoil anything like you're just paying a lot of money for half of the deck um and then you start to choose the archetype that you want to run sinful spoil with um and that's pretty crazy. And this hasn't gone on no gone unnoticed. Um, I mentioned it again in one of my videos like three weeks ago. And uh, since then, many of other content creators have been talking about this. Uh, you have people like Distant Coder or uh, Team APS talking about these topics. And the Yu-Gi-Oh has, for the most part, we have gotten back to Teledad format where everything is just really expensive to play the best deck. Now... I didn't play Teledad format, so I don't know if it was a situation where Teledad it was where you were playing Teledad or you were losing. But the perk of the Fire King Simple Spoils format is that we do have a very diverse format, and it's going to be one of the best decks in the room, but it is not the best deck, which is kind of segueing into the next topic and the main topic of this format of this video. Uh Fire King anything. So if we look at the last OCG report, um, which was Fire King pretty much taking over the entire meta, uh, a lot of people are in, a lot of people are predicting that Fire King anything is just going to be like tier zero point five, where we're not completely in a tier zero format, but we're pr pretty much there. And I disagree. I heavily disagree that that's going to happen in the TCG. Um, and mainly re the main reason for that is because the TCG is such a different format. If you have to think about it, the OCG still has Max C. They have the big cockroach that we banned years ago. And sure, a lot of people will be like, oh, it's one card. One card can't change the format. It does. It heavily changes the format in the OCG because it is not just unbanned. It's at three. And the card in of itself is a pseudo floodgate. Because the moment you activate, your opponent is left with two choices. Play under it and let your opponent draw a thousand cards or stop playing. And so Max C just, the entire format revolves around Max C in the OCG, which makes certain decks a lot more playable, makes a lot of other decks not playable. 
and just completely changes the entire play style of the format. So in the TCG, we don't have max C. So we have we get to play certain decks a lot more aggressively or passively, or just certain decks get to thrive, whereas other decks can't because they don't have max C. But also on top of that, our format, even post Maze and post Phantom Nightmare, is still very much looking like it's going to be a very diverse format. Now, I personally do not like diverse formats. Um, I know that a lot of people disagree with that as a minority thought, but I personally think that the current format is in a bad state simply because there are just so many viable decks. Um, and that that's mainly because I think it more rather of my upbringing into Yu-Gi-Oh! So I started competitively playing in tier format. Now, I didn't play tier, um, but in tier format, I had a lot of fun in tier format. And I'm probably a big minority saying that, but I had a lot of fun playing in tier format because tier, although it was the best deck in the room, it wasn't impossible to beat. Uh, there were a lot of other tier zero formats that I know of where it was just kind of an auto lose if you weren't playing it and you went second. Um, like the Gokies where they would just hand rip you and shit like that. Uh, tier format just didn't it didn't feel impossible um at least for me um and so i had a lot of fun in tier format when it was tier zero i didn't even when i lost i felt like i had a good time playing the game and i know again i'm the minority in this but then we moved into cash tier format and yes arise heart is a bullshit card i don't like arise heart and i'm glad he's banned but even in cash format i really liked that cash tier yes was the big dog but he wasn't the best deck like wasn't like the only good deck in the room cash tier format had like three or four decks that were like the best decks and then everything else was like kind of a rogue strategy and i kind of liked that and the main reason i liked that was because you kind of know what to expect you know what to counterplay you know what decks to play because they are good matchups into the best decks you know what cards to play because they're good counters to the best decks and this current format I personally do not like because there's just too much to expect uh, real quick let's just take a look at my last uh, like tier list prediction video so if we're looking at this tier list uh, these this is for the most part the decks that are um, constantly going to be getting played at regionals and nationals and stuff these are decks that are in the format in some way shape or form um, now I was very wrong with the unchained call I will admit that unchained is still very playable and honestly we would move it up to high potential, but we're not touching the tier list other than that. But look, these are a lot of decks that you have to expect and prepare for going into this format. If you're going to a regional, you could face any one of these decks and then some that didn't make it onto this list. Now, yes, most of your deck planning is going to be revolving around Labyrinth, Fire King, Sinful Spoil, Snake Eye, and Rescue Ace, and then these three all hybrid with each other. So you have to prepare for those decks. But then on top of that, based on how your deck plays, you have to be ready and acknowledge your bad matchups out of all these other decks and prepare around that. And I feel like with a 15 card extra deck, there's just not enough room to prepare for all these. And you kind of have to cut your losses on certain matchups and just hope you don't face them. Now, yes, you could come back with the argument of, like, just get good, or you just prefer a format where side decking is easy, and, you know, I think that's still a fair thing to prefer. I don't think that pro players, or myself, um, which I'm no pro player by any means, but I do agree with them in that aspect, I don't think there should be anything wrong with preferring a format where you don't have to prepare for 40 different decks. Uh, more rather, you much rather playing a format where you only have to prepare for, like, two or three and then any deck that would be a bad matchup but for this format it's just so diverse you don't know what you're going to go against and when you're playing nine rounds at a regional you have to spin that wheel of which one you're going to face every round which to an extent at a regional was already the case for four for the first four rounds because the first four rounds is just a wild card you could be facing any deck because the first four rounds are more decided on what players are going to be at the bottom tables and what players are going to be at the top tables and so the car the decks that were best in the format always usually ended up at the top tables but 
you're kind of still spinning that wheel even on the last five to six rounds depending on how big your regional is and it's because of this that again i say i just personally don't think this is a good format and i know that i'm not alone i know there are other content creators that agree with me on this um ggygo being one of them where uh he even posted a video i think like last week saying that this format is just not a good one and he got a lot of flack for it but at the same time it's his opinion um you know he doesn't think it's a good format and i think he's entitled to have that opinion without people hating on him for it now of course there is the argument that a diverse format is better because it lets newer players get into the game easier and get into competitive Yu-Gi-Oh a lot easier because their bad tier 3 deck actually stands a chance at doing well and yes that is a good argument um however again it's just one of those things where these newer players you know you could hit someone with the get good, you know, you got to prepare for better, more decks and stuff like that. But I could also just come back at you and say, get good and like learn the game and learn new decks. But at the end of the day, this is all just our own perspectives. Either you like the format or you don't. Um, and I, again, I personally do not think this is a good format. However, I am willing to acknowledge that a diverse format is healthier for the competitive and just overall overarching Yu-Gi-Oh like community it's healthier for newer players to get in however at the end of the day a more diverse format is not healthy for the competitive competitive players it's healthier for people getting into competitive which is at the same time something we want to see but it is not healthy for people who take the game way too seriously <laughs> so it's kind of more of just like a rock paper scissors argument there's really no right answer at the end of the day it's more of just what you know what do you think like do you like the format or do you not like the format? And if you don't, you kind of have to make the choice on either just kind of play through it and wait till the format gets more to something of your liking or just kind of take a break, um, which, you know, that's not always an answer a lot of us like to make. But at the end of the day, competitive Yu-Gi-Oh is exhausting. And if you are somebody who works a full time job and cardboard is not your only focus, like players like Pack and Jesse, they're lucky enough to be able to do Yu-Gi-Oh! And like, because they're content creators, they get to make it a living for them. So they get the time to be able to focus on exclusively cardboard. Whereas like the average Yu-Gi-Oh! player works a full-time job, probably has a significant other they like to spend time with. They have friends. And so cardboard kind of has to take the sideline. So to be able to do all of that and then still try and keep up with the very quickly evolving format because we get a new set every three weeks it's very exhausting and then on top of that having to learn and counterplay against 20 different decks is even more exhausting and needless to say i am one of those average Yu-Gi-Oh players i do have a full-time job i do have a life outside of Yu-Gi-Oh, and so yeah i don't like this format I I'm safe to say it is safe to say for me that I don't like this format because there's just too much to keep track of and on top of that we get new cards like every two to three weeks that I have to learn and I you know within those new cards there could be new decks or new strategies to currently existing decks that you have to learn and that is part of the game I understand that but I don't think I should still have to like the format uh, just because that is part of the game I guess is what I'm trying to say so I don't know I'm just opening the discussion to you guys do you like this current format do you like you know more like triangle formats where two like three or four decks are the best decks and more of just what is your opinion on the current format and then also you know what's your opinion on pricing uh-huh because uh, I didn't want to go too much into it in this video because I already talked about it in the last video but um yeah, I just wanted to kind of open up this discussion in a more civil way than I have in the past. And again, if you guys, if there are any toxic, blah, if there are any toxic comments and down below, I will just delete them. There's no room for that. Um, but let me know your guys' opinions on this current format. And uh, I do actually intend on uploading a second video this week of a uh, live game um from my locals i didn't get to do a vlog this week but i did get a live game recorded uh, a couple of them actually so look forward to that but other than that i'll see you all in next week's like discussion-esque video and uh don't forget to leave a like comment and subscribe see ya